Dr. Melissa Gerisi is about to let you in on a little secret. If you've ever wanted to dive in a coral nursery, I'm not kidding, and in the tropical Florida Keys, well, you can. She talks about Ocean Conservation Foundation's mission, what they do, and how you, as a regular open water diver, can come get in on it. You're gonna love seeing the nurseries in these videos and hearing how they're literally saving coral reefs. But the biggest thing of all is how you can volunteer and actually come and do this. Melissa, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Okay, so tell me what you do. I'm the director of Ocean Conservation Foundation, which is the nonprofit arm of Rainbow Reef Dive Center. The purpose of Ocean Conservation Foundation is to try to harness the power of Rainbow Reef. It's the largest dive center in North America and take our dive instructors and our boats to help out with all the coral restoration efforts. So we are trying to help out all the restoration efforts in the Florida Keys by partnering with other agencies, non-for-profits, government agencies, and with other dive shops like Seminole Scuba. Cool, and all the way up here in Orlando. Yeah, so Seminole scuba will plan events and charters and they'll actually come down to Rainbow Reef and then we'll take them out to Coral Restoration Foundation's nurseries or we can run reef trips where people can become citizen scientists and submit their fish survey data to the reef databases. So their instructors come down and we partner with them to come work in the Florida Keys with us. Anybody can volunteer for this? Anybody can come down and volunteer. If they come out to the Coral Restoration Foundation, they can actually learn from CRF in the morning in a dry land training. And then we take them out on the boats in the afternoon to the nursery. And they can actually clean the coral trees and they can learn how to monitor coral and actually get to go out and do that stuff. So we've seen a lot of people that want to do these things, but I've also seen even teaching photography, underwater photography, yep. And stuff, you do have to have a certain level of competency diving. What's the what's like the minimum? Great question. So people have to be open water divers, but in order to dive in the nursery, we do make them do a buoyancy check. And if they're not comfortable in the water, we provide free guides on every charter. And to go out to the nursery, you have a ratio of six to one. So if people are struggling with their buoyancy, they can still help with the coral trees. We'll just have them kneel in the sand. In the nursery is Coral Restoration Foundation, who's one of our partners will allow them to come into the water, but if they're not good, if they don't have great buoyancy, well, we will have them on the ground. And so that's not hurting anything on the ground there. As long as they're not moving. So if they're moving, they can be suffocating corals with the sand coming up. Okay. But if they're staying still, they're not really disturbing anything. That's good to know. You've probably seen it. They see anybody touching the bottom anywhere and they want to be the first one to pounce on the yep. internet or whatever. Oh, you're not supposed to. Do I've seen it in like on beaches yep. where like kids are running by. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a context to this. Yeah, so as a Blue Star operator in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. We're not supposed to be touching the sand for anything, but we have actually gotten clarification on that from Blue Star. So we had a conversation with them actually a few weeks ago, and we said, hey, if there's a lot of current and it would be safer for the coral and safer for our instructors, can we have fin tips in the sand? And they said, yes, that's okay. But we try to keep everyone in a neutrally buoyant position so they're not injuring the coral and they're not stirring up things that can injure the corals. Yeah. Or the fishes that live in the sand. Or kicking each other in the face. <laughs> I don't care about that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is essentially, a, it's separate organization that functions it's an arm of rainbow reef yes but it is a different entity Yes. Okay. So Ocean Conservation Foundation is a non-for-profit arm. So what I do is I liaise between all the different agencies and with Rainbow Reef to try to say if Coral Restoration Foundation needed employees to come out and help out in their nursery, we could say, okay, can we take 10 employees and have them come out to the nursery? And so we actually got a Patty Aware grant to actually help out Coral Restoration Foundation. So we actually have some money where we can actually pay Rainbow Reef staff to actually go out to the nursery and help out. So people that work for Rainbow Reef can actually get paid to do this? Yeah. Yes. In theory? Ooh, that's good to know. So depending on the grants that we have. So. <laughs> and it's a get rich quick scheme, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> right? so what we try to do is we try to take the money that we are awarded. And the goal is that since we have all these dive professionals and dive professionals can sometimes do things faster than your average scuba joe who dives three times a year, we can hopefully help out and do things a little bit faster. What is one thing that people are surprised? You notice every time they go out there, they're surprised by one thing. What is that? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think that they're surprised at how much they like cleaning the coral trees. We've had guests that come in and they're like, why would I want to bother doing this? Like, it doesn't seem very fun. I'd rather just go dive on the reef. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, these coral trees are really neat. Like, the structure of the trees, how they're done, and they're like, really, we're just going to go out and clean a coral tree? And they come back from that and they're like, that was such a cool experience. I mean, the fish are coming into their face and they're like, wow, like, these fish were right there. Like, they're not afraid in the nursery. So, it's one thing that always surprises people. They're like, yeah, we want to go experience it, but what's this really going to be like? And when they come out, they're like, 
like, that was the coolest thing I've ever done. So you so. just you just tending to the little coral trees. Yeah, so you use a scraper and you actually scrape like the fire coral off the trees and you get to knock some of the bivalves off. So it's, you know, get some of your frustration out. It's actually really rewarding and it's harder than you think. People go through their air a lot faster too. And then what is an opinion that you've had Ooh. that's changed from when you started to now? Ooh. Kind of a 180. So, so we started Ocean Conservation Foundation? Yeah, since you started doing this, you specifically. So personally, one, one thing that I heard is that there's a lot of fighting with the coral restoration efforts in the Florida Keys. Amongst that, each other? Amongst each other, because everybody has the same goal of restoring our reefs and making sure that the corals are healthy. And I heard there's a lot of infighting, but from what I've seen, everyone's actually willing to work together. So that was one thing that I was like, ooh, I really hope that's not the case. And everyone's been really welcoming, because I only started this position about three months ago. Everyone's been willing to hear each other out and see what the others are doing. And even organizations that I heard weren't getting along, they've been pretty supportive of each other. So it's kind of nice to see that. So you think people just exaggerate that stuff for gossip purposes? Yes. And actually I've had somebody approach me that wants to make a film about the coral drama in the Florida Keys and I haven't responded to them. Because it's That should not, be off record probably. It's not <laughs> existent really in your experience? I think that there may be some animosity between individual people, but I don't think that it's between the organizations. Yeah, but they were ex and But people and like drama, yeah. so they like to build that stuff up. Yeah, they do. I mean, you can make anything dramatic if it's But fake. I mean, we've spoken with Reef Renewal, Coral Restoration Foundation, Moat, Eye Care. We're part of the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary Mission Iconic Reefs program, or Blue Star, and it seems like everybody actually gets along. And it's just people like to exaggerate what problems are because people love seeing that stuff. Otherwise, it's boring. Right. No, I get it. Sorry, okay. we're the boring ones trying to get along with everyone. Okay, <laughs> so a little less boring that hat you're wearing. So if anyone's just listening to this and not watching, she has a hat that looks like a coral reef with all kinds of. It looks like almost like a bunch of Muppets or something. Like it's very 3D. Uh, so tell me, what is the story with that hat? This hat actually helped to raise a lot of money for Coral Restoration Foundation. So at the beginning of June, they have an event called Coral Palooza. And one of the CRF interns actually made this hat. It took her 14 hours and it was part of the raffle. I was in a bidding war with a woman named Patty Gross, who's part of the Women Divers Hall of Fame. And she's on the board for CRF to win this hat. So I won it, but the hat, because raffle tickets were $5 and we're in a bidding war, actually raised a significant amount of money for Coral Restoration Foundation during that event. Nice. I love that thing. What are you most looking forward to right now? I'm finally up to a point where we can start expanding our programs and what we can offer and what we can do. What's the most fun part of your job? One it's single specific <laughs> thing that you t typically look forward to each day. Teaching people and getting those aha moments in the water. But then they're like, oh, I want to come do this again. It's that I want to come out again and do this thing that I thought was going to be boring. And I can I can believe that, and this is going to be a sound like a weird analogy here, but I've seen that with with the megalodon shark teeth diving in Venice. Yep. We went to Venice to do the shark tooth dive, yep. and we wanted to interview like this guru there, right? And he took us out on his boat and everything. And and Katie found a 3.75 inch one within five minutes, a perfect megalodon tooth. That's awesome. And we were addicted. All three of us went. We're like, that'll be fun. It'll be cool. You know, it's something to do. Yep. And we're like, Ugh. we understand now. It's weird when something goes underwater, the level of fun and addictiveness goes up. And that's the, that's the most fun part of it for me, is seeing that on someone's face and being like, yes, you get it now. I, yeah, totally. You know, I've tried to do the shark tooth diving three times and got blown out all three times. We're going back up on the 24th to try for the fourth time. When, you, when it does take, you'll be hooked. Oh, I'm sure I will, just like yeah. everyone doing the conservation stuff underwater. Yeah, all right, well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that's a good